Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Harrison Explained and today we are going to discuss diseases which present with fever and rash. This is going to be the first video of this series where we will cover rashes with central distribution. Please note that this list is not exhaustive and that I have outlined only the commonly asked diseases which show up in the exams. Let us first have a look at the kinds of rash. I won't go into much detail but just enough so that you can identify different lesions. A macule is a flat lesion and you will see an erythematous region which is blanchable like here that is it goes away upon pressing. Papules are raised and have a diameter of less than 5 mm. Here is a list of all the diseases which are classically associated with a central maculopapular rash. We will go over them one by one while discussing the characteristics of the rash and differentiating features. The rash in measles starts at the hairline and moves down the body and it starts as a discrete lesion but as it spreads it becomes confluent. The high yield point here is that it spares the palm and soles as you can see here. Coplic spots are pathognomic for measles and are white or blue lesions as you can see in this image on the buccal mucosa seen when the initial symptoms appear. Rubella or German measles also spreads from the hairline downwards but unlike measles the rash disappears from the original sites as it migrates. Forchheimer spots are pinpoint or larger petechiae in the soft palate. They are non-specific as they are also seen in infectious mononucleosis, scarlet fever and Zika virus infection. Infectious mononucleosis has a non-specific exanthem. Exanthem is a medical term for a widespread rash which is accompanied with systemic symptoms like fever, malaise and headache. So coming back to infectious mono, remember that it is caused by Epstein-Barr virus and it spreads via bodily secretions and is thus also called kissing disease. So if you see relevant history and symptoms like pharyngitis, tonsillitis, lymphadenopathy with a non-specific central rash, think, think of infectious mono. Fifth disease or erythema infectiosum has a typical rash which looks like slapped cheeks. It is caused by parvovirus B19 and affects children between 3 and 12 years. Remember that this rash appears after the fever has resolved and that a more diffuse rash appears on the trunk and extremities the next day. Adults will also have polyarthritis and pregnant females will be prone to developing fetal high drops so keep an eye out for that. Epidemic typhus is caused by rickettsia pravazaki and here the rash will first appear in the axilla as you can see here. 4 to 5 days after the onset of fever then spread to the trunk and later to the extremities. It spares the face, palm and soles and the rash will be confluent as it progresses. Remember that epidemic typhus spreads by lice. Lyme disease has a classical bullseye rash which can also come up in questions being described as annular lesions. Remember that Lyme disease is caused by Borrelia burgdorferi and that the rash is at the first stage of infection and it causes myocarditis, Bell's palsy, CNS infection and arthritis of large joints in the later stages. Rheumatic fever has a rash called erythema marginatum which is also a part of Jones criteria used for diagnosis. The rash spreads on the limbs and the trunk and is raised with a pale center as you can see here. SLE has a classical rash in butterfly distribution on the cheeks and this is also described as a malar rash. This one is very popular. That is all for today. If you like this video, do like and comment down below. See you in the next one.